Hey guys, how's it going? So this morning, Erin and I are heading down our lane to help our neighbors with some tree planting. So they recently had a big-ish tree removed, and recently, as in yesterday, <laughs> This tree was a little bit over half dead and they've been wanting to have it removed so they were able to do that yesterday. Erin actually ran down and got some really neat uh, video footage of the stump being ground out. Isn't that fascinating to watch? I always love to kind of see that process. Just knowing that there's fresh trees that we have here. Uh, we picked them up early down at the garden center when I knew my parents had some red point maples in stock. That's what we are um, planting today. And we've been watering them until the tree service had a chance to run down and get their tree removed. So I'm just excited for them. They noticed when we uh, put in all of our autumn blaze maples and they really liked that look and thought, you know what, one of these days we need to get that big tree out and then we want to kind of mimic that same look so that maybe more of our lane is unified, which, hey, I'm down with that. So we thought it would be fun to run down there and plant those this morning. We've got to gather up some supplies. So of course, some shovels, tape measures, um, the gator, the trees, biotone. I gotta find Aaron. He's gonna help me gather all that stuff up. So I think we need shovels, probably a couple. You, you got want those the trailer already. For dirt? That's probably a good idea. I'll, go um, I'll get some starter fertilizer. It's been a while since we've used that. Yeah, it has. All right, here are the trees. So we've got four of them sitting here. Red point maples, you guys know we love red point maples. 45 feet tall, 30 feet wide, hardy to negative 20, so zone five. That's their fall color right there. And they have really pretty red stems as well. And they're pretty decent sized trees to start with, which is fun. So pros and cons of the red point maple. Pros are that it's a pretty fast growing maple. It seems to not be bugged by any kind of uh, insect or disease that I am aware of, and I've been growing them for lots of years now. Um, they also seem to color up earlier than most other maples, and they lose their leaves really quickly. So instead of, you know those trees that drop a little bit of leaves at a time, and it feels like you've got this mess that lasts for weeks and weeks, uh, I feel like with the red point maples, they do it a lot quicker, so it's just one cleanup as opposed to several. Um, the only con for us in our area is that sometimes they deal with a chlorosis problem, which is a lack of iron, um, and that's just due mainly to our soil. And not all of ours deal with that. In fact, we have, how many red point maples do we have? Like 10, 10 three, four, five, nine, 10, 11. I think we have 11. We have 11 red point maples and two of them just this year. One of them had a slight chlorosis problem and one of them was fairly severe and it was easy to correct with chelated iron, like they're coming back and looking great and we've never dealt with it before this point. So it's just something that we'll treat on an as needed basis and when we see it start to happen. But that's kind of typical for maples in our area. Um, that's the biggest thing that they deal with is just lack of iron and that's because of our soil being so high pH. So that may not be an issue for everyone. Still love this tree. I think that the benefits far, far, far outweigh um, the chlorosis issue. So anyway, we're gonna get these loaded up. We're gonna grab some land and see compost and then we'll head down the lane. Count it again. I think we have 12. There's 12? Pretty sure, because we have five on the west side. Uh-huh. Uh, three in the parking area. Yeah. Eight. Uh -huh. One in the very front right here. The nine. Uh, uh -huh. One in the walkway up to the back uh, kitchen door. 10. One by the um, what's that? The Leyland Cypress. Leyland Cypress. Yeah, that's 11. And then one over here. 12. We have 12. Very nice. We could almost put a couple more out here too. Well, I think uh, in the big area out here where we have grass, where we want a lot of shade trees, I think that would be a good idea to maybe dot some around in there. Although, you know, they only get 45 feet tall. Only? That's a big tree. Well, yeah, but I like I like seeing the tag say 60. Correction, he wants the tag to say 100. <laughs> I huh? do, actually. <laughs> I don't know what type of tree. 100 feet tall? Probably not a hybrid. You're probably not going to get a tree that doesn't drop seeds. True. That gets 100 feet tall. You're probably right. I picked some good scissors. Yeah, you did. Where'd you find these? In Benjamin's drawer? <laughs> No, they were in my drawer out in the barn. Like, what is this? Where's your Focos? Those are dainty. You know, I could show you how to use those scissors. Could you? Yeah. I'm almost oh, there. Oh, no, you're not. Oh my word. Here, here, there. here. No, no, okay. no. You right, gotta pull, it. you've gotta show pull me, the tree. Show me how to do it. I wanna see it. <laughs> you have to pull the tree yeah, real you tight. You're the one. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, that was actually pretty easy. <laughs> here, allow me to do the rest of them. Okay. okay. So you, it's the key is pulling the rope tight. Pull it taut. Yep. You can't let it lo be loosey-goosey. Even with Falcos, you can't let it be loose. 
Do you feel good about yourself? Looking good. All right, guys, so we're at the end of our lane. In fact, we showed you the black lace elderberries that are just across the street in another one of our, kind of our neighbor, kind of, <laughs> one of their gardens right there. Um, and this is where the tree was. It's crazy how they make it look like nothing really ever existed here. They're so good. This was probably a really easy job for them, though, I imagine. Like, they can just pull right up here yeah, on this nice right. lane, and Not the tree like is right here. Or something. Yeah, we're at my parents' house on a hill that's all terraced. It's so hard. Anyway, so this is the area you guys we're going to be measuring here and these trees since they get 30 feet wide We're gonna try to go, you know 15 ish feet in and then we'll just space them out to where they'll start kind of at the street and come back this direction Aaron's got flags. We've got a tape measure I'm gonna ask our neighbor to turn on the sprinklers real quick so that we can know where the sprinklers are because we don't want to put a tree right next to one. Oh, true. Because otherwise it would hit the trunk and then it would it'd be have a dry spot in right. the yard. So anyway, we'll mark where the sprinklers are. And this is why Aaron needs to be involved in all the projects because I would have never thought about marking sprinklers. I would have just planted the trees. <laughs> we would have had to move sprinklers. Here. Oh, we can? Oh, yeah. They're oh, yeah. That is, that is pretty easy to identify where the sprinklers are. So we're going to try to avoid these. Do you want to get an overall measurement, Aaron, first and then kind of do the math? Or do you want to place the first one kind of here-ish? So Aaron has the sprinklers flagged. Even though you can see them, it's nice to have a like visible visual from a distance. So that looks like there are five sprinklers we're dealing with here, which that's easy. So there's one there. There's one right up here. And then two more. The last one ends pretty much right on the corner there. And the last one is here. Okay, so here's what we've done. We've got the sprinklers marked along the lane and then we measured in 15 feet right here because the trees get 30 feet wide. We don't want them to be impeding the lane in any way once they're mature. Um, and then we measured 15 feet in on that side. And now how many inches feet? How many feet is it? It's, um, like roughly because it doesn't really matter but it's like 160 feet like 159 okay and some change but you could move that a little you know six inches and it'd be 160 so if we're spacing them every 30 feet if you want them to touch mm -hmm. at maturity because they're 30 feet right right mm -hmm. so we don't need 120 feet if we wanted them to touch yeah so we, we'll have some extra feet so footage. we could go get another one next year or this year if your parents have any still i think they might we could go every we could start here and just not make it all the way to the end and you could just plant another one sure what we could do is put flags and find out where they... might be kind of nice not to have one at the very end because it does um hinder well, the yeah the view well maybe we should just put flags where we think we could put them and see how they line up with the sprinklers okay to make sure it's not an issue yep They're all planted. We ended up with five instead of the four that we thought we were gonna need, and they look so good. Aaron's out there watering them in. Actually, the one he's watering in was the hardest one to plant. We ran into some really hard soil uh, and a metal, abandoned metal pipe in the middle of the hole, but it was like solid. We couldn't get it out. So that one was a little tough, but the rest of them were easy digging. 
like really easy. And this first one, like this is right where the trunk was of the old tree. That's like seven or eight feet away. Didn't run into a single root, not a one, which was amazing. So to plant them, you can see how much bigger kind of, I think there's like a little dip right there. You can kind of see how big the root ball was. So we dug the hole quite a bit bigger. And then we put a little bit of biotone starter fertilizer in the bottom of the hole, land and seed compost and native soil to get them all kind of cozed into their spot. We really packed the soil in around the roots. In fact, usually if there's air pockets, you'll find them when you water them in with the hose for the first time because that soil will settle. So just watch for that and you want to make sure to add extra soil if you need to. We don't want any air around the roots. We rolled our Ely hose reel down here because it has 200 feet of hose. I use it a lot in our cut flower garden. And you guys know I love hose length, the retractable hoses, but in situations like this where you need to go further than 82 feet and something that's more mobile, this hose reel has been really handy. I found myself wheeling it around to the separate corners of our cut flower garden um, so that I could use it and then put it away so I don't have to look at it, which is great. So the four wheel hose reel has the 200 feet and then we have another Ely hose reel with two wheels that has 100 feet of hose. I do like that they have cream colored Hose. That is nice. Yeah. Like not You're bright. Not a big fan of the colors. No, I don't want bright green or bright, bright blue. It just shows up too much. The other thing is usually, like if it were me and I wasn't worried about measurements or anything, I would always err on like wanting to plant them right here because it feels like it's more appropriate spacing, but you really have to take into account the mature size of these trees. You know, it, they grow 30 feet, so 15 feet from the center, 15 feet over this way, and then 15 feet over that way. At maturity, they'll barely reach the lane, which is perfect because that will create very little pruning maintenance on these trees, other than, you know, if you want to limb them up or thin them out or anything like that. But they won't have to do any trimming in terms of like making sure that UPS trucks and delivery trucks can make it down the lane. That won't be an issue at all. And once they put on a little size two, they'll just naturally appear closer to the lane than they are currently. If we get up close, you can see those red stems. Aren't those pretty? I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Now we'd like to take you down to our old house and show you the red point maple that we planted 10, like maybe 10 plus years ago. So you can see what a larger version of this tree looks like. And that's always a good idea. If you're overwhelmed by what to put in your yard, what tree to plant, just drive around your immediate area and look at what trees are doing really well. Look at what trees are huge that don't look sick that, you know, and if you can knock on a door or find somebody who's working out in their yard and you can ask those people what those trees are or take a picture of the leaf and take it down to your garden center so they can help you identify it. But that's a great way to know what does well in your area honestly. Okay, so I'm gonna get this thing turned around and we're gonna head back to the house, get into the truck. Ready to head back? Yeah, I just have one thing I want to mention about the hose reel. Okay. I have one complaint. I like it. I like it a lot. However, there needs to be, when you reel it up, so this just kind of hangs here, Uh huh. but the hose naturally wants to let it fall to the side. Oh yeah. There needs to be like a hook or something where you can you oh sure when you're done and then same with the what's this called uh the lead hose the or lead hose. Uh, yeah you need to have somewhere almost like even a velcro strap or something yeah, something just mm -hmm. to be able to adhere it because otherwise it'll kind of want to fall on the ground and drag and drag and your wheels will fall over it so anyway that's my only complaint Ely, if you're watching this Fix it. <laughs> Some, fix it. Some type of a strap. There you go. Yeah. Otherwise, I like it. All right, guys. So this is Aaron and my old garden. Look at it. It's grown up so much. All this stuff like poofing over the fence over there. But this here is a red point maple, which is roughly 10 years old. We were trying to look at pictures when I planted it and we couldn't find exactly, but it's like 10, maybe 11 years old. And it's absolutely gorgeous. This is how they normally look in our area. Like not a touch of chlorosis on this tree, just really beautiful, even canopy. And I'll show you the one that we planted next door, which was a year after, a year or two after we planted this one. So it's not quite as old. Yeah, look at those leaves, just beautiful. And here's the other one. And that one looks really good too. You can tell the trunk isn't quite as big. So not quite as old, but beautiful shape. They naturally grow, grow more conically like this, um, just on their own. And you know, at our house where we have our red points, we're going to probably be limbing them up a little bit further to create a little bit more area um, because they're very close to our driveway in some cases, at least five of them anyway. Um, but I just love them. I think they're awesome trees. I also planted this red tip Norway spruce. That's just phenomenal. I wish that was at my house. 
right now. Look at how pretty that tree is. Gosh. Also, my boxwood hedges. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Wish I could dig these up and take them home too. All right guys, so that is it for today's video. Super fun to see those trees. When we were coming back down the lane when we, after we got in the truck, just looking at those five trees and knowing what they're gonna look like in just such a short amount of time is such a happy thought. And that's, you know, Aaron is super big on let's like get shade trees everywhere. If everybody would plant a shade tree or two, we could really have a beautiful looking area, especially where it's so, so hot. We appreciate every little smidgen of shade we can get around here. So I'm very excited about it. And excited to show you guys progress as they grow. Um, those trees that we planted were a one inch caliper, 10 gallon size, just to give you an idea. Um, and I don't think there's anything else. I don't think I forgot anything. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.